Welcome to RP Hub. In this video, we'll discuss about what is triggers in UiPath Orchestrator. Triggers enables you to execute jobs in a pre-planned manner at regular intervals or time. Triggers whenever new items are added to your queue or queue triggers, the triggers page enables you to create new triggers. So if you want to know the detail about triggers in UiPath, then Please watch the complete video and don't forget to like and share with the new circle. Trigger execution time can be existed according to a specific time zone. The time zone set to a trigger is not correlated to the time zone of the tenant. So when we talk about the triggers, there are two types of trigger. One is time triggers and queue based triggers, which enables you to schedule a recurrent time to start a job input value from the process that support input and output parameters. So if you want to see the triggers, where is the trigger is the value you can see directly from the home page. Otherwise, you have to go to the automations and here you will see the trigger. Here you can create your own triggers like providing the name of the trigger. Uh, so you can see here time and queue trigger. So if you're creating for the time trigger, you have to provide the name of the trigger, then the process name. It is inherited or it's low, normal or high priority and the processing license or runtime license you are running for unattended testing or non productions. Here you have to select the time zone on which time zone you want to trigger it like hourly basis, daily basis, weekly, monthly or advanced. In next sections, every one is the minute and uh, you can select the minutes till 30 minutes here. Post that you have to select the time zone in which time zone you want to set it for. After that, once you will click on the ad, that trigger will be added successfully for you. See, similarly, you can create the queue triggers where you have to define the different triggers I presents like if you want to uh, define for the multiple triggers then you have to provide the dynamic uh, descriptions or locations which define how many times a process to be executed according to the given trigger the options enable you to utilize your resource to their greatest extent as soon as robot becomes available it executes the indicated process according to the provided trigger. trigger. Cued job scenarios. If we set multiple triggers on the same robot and their execution time overlaps at least one time, jobs are queued in a pending state. The robot executes the queue job in a chronological order. If the same process is scheduled on the same robot multiple times and their execution time overlaps, only one process is queued in a pending state. For example, if a process E on robot X is scheduled run at 1120, 1121 and 1125, the behavior is as follows. At 1120, the first process will be executed. If the first execution finishes before second trigger, the second trigger is processed. If the execution finishes before the 1125 trigger, the latter is also executed. If the execution of the 1121 trigger does not finish before the 1125 one, the latter is added to a queue in a pending state. If the first execution does not finish before second trigger, then the 1121 trigger is placed in a queue in a pending state. If the execution of the 1121 trigger finishes before the 1125, one the latter is also executed. So this is how the process which we are triggering in the queue based trigger where you will find out different aspects. So queue triggers can instantly start process upon the trigger creation or whenever you add a new item to a queue. The trigger runs in the environment associated with the selected process. There are three options that will help you parameterize the rules of the processing trigger like minimum number of items to trigger the first job. Here you have to provide the item processing job is only started after the targeted queues has at least this number of new items. Default queues items are not counted. 
maximum number of pending and running jobs allowed simultaneously is the second thought you can see here next to the cursor bar so here the maximum number is of allowed pending and running jobs counted together for two or more jobs allowed simultaneously third option needs to be defined as described in the next sections other job is triggered for each new items like a new job is triggered for each number of new items added on top of the number of items defined for the first options only level if there are two or more jobs allowed simultaneously which is defined using the options which we have discussed second one so this is how we are creating a trigger accounting it and providing the details about running of trigger in time in queue based triggers so that's all about uipath orchestrator trigger hope you liked it if you really enjoyed the session consider subscribing and pressing bell icon for more updates thank you for watching